backgrounds to create a mood in which the action or story of the picture can be more vividly felt. Bellini was a religious painter. His landscapes intensified the traditional subjects of Christianity. His pupil, Giorgione, was to extend the humanization of landscape to contemporary life. And in this picture, he has discovered, or I suppose one should say rediscovered, one of the comforting illusions of civilized man, the myth of Arcadia. Of course, it is only a myth. Our country life isn't at all like this. And even on a picnic, ants attack the sandwiches and wasps buzz round the wine glass. But Giorgio Ernie has shown us how fundamentally pagan it is. This Arcadia is as much a tribute to antiquity as were the Republican virtues of the Florentine humanists, and as much part of the rediscovery of man. But in his sensual rather than his intellectual nature. With Giorgio and his picnic, the balance and enjoyment of our human faculties seems to achieve perfection. But in history, all points of supposed perfection have a hint of menace, and Giorgione himself discovers it in that mysterious picture known as the Tempesta. on earth is going on? What is the meaning of this half-naked woman suckling a baby, this flash of lightning, this broken column? Nobody knows. Nobody has ever known. It was described in George Early's own time as a soda and a gypsy. Well, whatever it means, it certainly doesn't show any confidence in the light of human reason. A man can do all things if he will. How Naive Alberti's statement seems when one thinks of that great bundle of fears and memories that every individual carries around with him, to say nothing of the external forces which are totally beyond his control. Giorgione, the passionate lover of physical beauty, painted this picture of an old woman and inscribed it Col Tempo, with time. One can see that she must once be a beauty. It's one of the first masterpieces of a new pessimism, new because without the comfort of religion, that was to be given final expression by Hamlet. The truth is, I suppose, that the civilization of the early Renaissance was not broadly enough based the few had gone too far away from the many, not only in knowledge and intelligence, this they always do, but in basic assumptions. When the first two generations of humanists were dead, their movement had no real weight behind it. And there was a reaction away from the human scale of values. Fortunately, they left in sculpture, painting and architecture their message to every generation that values reason, clarity and harmonious proportion and believes in the individual. <laughs>